Next up, wife gets life without parole for murder of sleeping husband. We, the jury, find the defendant, Don Wynn, guilty of 12 jurors, seven men, five women, unanimous verdict. Took about five hours for them to return here. Now we do know next date coming up is October 7th at 9 a.m. is sentencing. It'll be a chance for family to express their feelings in open court. However, we already know the sentence. The sentence in Missouri for first degree murder is life in prison without the possibility of parole. This story actually dovetails with one that I caught a few days ago, Jennifer Gledhill openly admitted to murdering her husband in the same exact fashion. Is this a foreshadowing of what's going to happen with Jennifer? We don't know. It's still early. They haven't even found the body yet. But what makes me curious, is there a murderous wives group chat? Is there a, a subreddit or a LinkedIn or WhatsApp out there where you get together and discuss the same three ways to try and kill your husbands? Like it's some sort of coordinated effort. Either you want to poison them or you want to shoot them or you you want to get online and you all use the same website to find a hitman named who wants to murder my husband.com a judge has sentenced dawn Wynn to life without parole in the fatal shooting of husband harold Wynn three years ago to collect one hundred thousand dollars in life insurance now a hundred grand would be nice to win on a scratch off but to do life without the possibility of parole the juice ain't worth the squeeze a mcdonald jury convicted the 50 year old anderson woman of first degree murder and armed criminal action at a three-day trial in August and Judge Kevin Selby assessed her the mandatory term for premeditated murder plus a consecutive term of 15 years at her sentencing Monday in Pinesville. You have concurrent and you have consecutive. Concurrent means they're going to run both sentences together. In this case, consecutive means that she's going to serve her life sentence first and then she's going to go on to do the 15 years after that. Harold Lee Wynn, 51, was found November 16th, 2022, lying in bed inside the couple's camper home near Anderson, almost completely covered up as if asleep with a gunshot wound to the back of his head. Don Wynn showed little to no emotion that we could tell as the sentence was read. Uh, she was then cuffed, uh, taken into custody, and walked out of the courtroom quietly. Uh, she didn't really even seem to glance around it. Uh, the judge thanked the jury for their participation. Uh, he also expressed that they were one of the best juries he's ever had and thanked them for their work and patience. What did she think law enforcement was going to deduce? That he shot himself in the head, pulled the covers over his body, and went back to sleep? You were never going to get that money. Now you're going to rot in prison. You must not know how insurance works, do you? If women could kill their husbands and collect money the next day, married men would be dropping like flies. The defendant told investigators at the time that she had been awakened by something brushing across their face and discovered that her husband had been shot. She said the gun had been on a shelf at the head of the bed and suggested that it may have fallen and discharged. That's even more stupid. But prosecutor Malaya Cheney pointed out at trial the shelves above the bed had raised the lips to prevent objects from sliding off. Physics dominates and an accidental discharge was made all the more unlikely by the safety features of the gun and the fact that it had been found on examination nation by investigators to have fully cycled the prosecutor maintained that could not have happened without persistent pressure on the trigger cheney pointed out to jurors that the evidence also did not support suicide as the manner of death since the first deputy on the scene found a deceased dominant hand lying beneath the covers and the 40 caliber handgun with which he had been shot wedged between two pillows behind his head and not within his reach i say it all the time the spouse is the prime suspect so if you're spouse dies and you claim it's unexpectedly either you better be telling the truth or you better be damn good at walking a tightrope because they are going to be on your ass if you follow true crime hell you don't even have to follow true crime if you watch how law enforcement handle cases of this nature period they're always just waiting for the spouse to slip up and the money is normally the number one motivator the medical examiner who performed the autopsy in this case testified that he did not believe 
believe the wound could have been self-inflicted since there were no contact burns or stippling around it. Stippling is patterns of gunshot residue that come from close range gunfire. The first deputy on the scene picked up the gun and took it out to her patrol car under an assumption the shooting had been either accidental or suicide. This could have been a mistrial. Later, she bought the gun back inside and laid it on the bed to take a photo of it. What was she, a rookie? She then failed to begin logging, who entered and left the camper until more than an hour after she arrived, raising additional questions about the integrity of the crime scene at trial. Okay, let me say this, because I'm not a deputy, I'm not in law enforcement, and I do not have a law enforcement background, quite the contrary. But I know if I don't know what to do at a crime scene, the best thing to do is to not touch anything and don't let anyone else touch anything. Just secure the crime scene, stand there and look professional. Defense attorney Charles Uppelt also criticized the detectives who ultimately led the investigation for failing to find a shell casing at the scene that they said they later happened to come upon among the bedding they removed for further examination at the sheriff's office. The defense tried to raise juror suspicions about a relative of the victim who lived in a cabin next to the camper and who at one time owned the gun in question. They gave the defense a lot of ground to fight on, but trial testimony established that Dawn Wynn had been in charge of the accounting for the couple's failed plumbing business and that her husband was being urged by their two adult sons to leave her and start up another plumbing business with them. Damn right. The failing plumbing business is curious to me within itself because was the plumbing business actually failing or was she cooking the books? Was she tucking a little money away for her own self? If she would do this, if she would do something like that to her husband for the life insurance money, then what is really beyond her? In the meantime, Dawn Wynn, who had taken an accounting job with another business, for Christ's sakes, don't let her touch anyone else's money in order to make ends meet, applied for $100,000 of life insurance on her husband as a benefit of that job, which makes me ask another question. Did she take the job to really make ends meet or did she take the job for the benefit to put that insurance money to put that bag on her husband's head in support of its charge of first degree murder? The prosecution presented testimony at trial that a pay statement she received one day before her husband's death informed her that the insurer had approved her application. Well, I'll be damned if that doesn't spell it out for you. I don't know what else does. There you have it, kids. Dawn Wynn. Let me know what you think in the comments.